all of us that I knew that were being considered for the job said yes immediately. Landing your dream job in the car business is not about finding the pot of gold at the end of the career trajectory rainbow of other car business jobs. It generally involves a lot of creativity, networking, who you know, and just putting yourself in the right place at the right time. Not by this job, this job, this job, but by looking at what the real qualification is for your dream job and then trying to figure out what makes you uniquely qualified for whatever it is. And it won't be a normal, like I need this amount of education and this amount of work experience and this amount of just knowledge base. It's always some unique combination and cocktail of things that make you a car enthusiast and capable professionally that puts you in the place to be considered. You'll never find me on Instagram talking about how hard the hustle is and how driven you've got to be to be successful. What you will hear me talking about is that driving a salvage title Lamborghini feels just about as good as driving one that you paid twice as much for and that there's always some roundabout ways that you can use advantages and creativity and think of a strategy that most people wouldn't use and get a competitive advantage to meet your goals. That's the kind of way I like to approach these types of things and the same thing is true for jobs. Because because the car business is not like your normal finance, accounting, consulting, private equity kind of gig where you're constantly bombarded with people trying to hire you. There are not car industry people in most cases out trawling through LinkedIn looking for candidates and parasitically you know, leeching off of other firms to make themselves who they want to be. It's always a set of unique qualifications that get someone in the door. And I worked at Lamborghini Atlanta for six years until November of 2015, and that was far longer than I ever imagined that experiment would take. But I learned a lot, but around 2014, I was over it. I was just tired of the hours and the politics of the way dealerships are run, and admittedly, some of the customers. So I was just kind of ready for whatever was next and had a foot out the door, and a strong breeze would have taken me the rest of the way at any point. I mean, I woke up every day thinking, is this the day I'm going to quit? Or every deal that got a little bit sideways, I said, you know, is this the one I'm going to quit over? And at the end of the day, it was none of those things. I just left because I was ready to. But Around 2014, I started putting resumes out there and polishing up my LinkedIn profile just to see what was really possible. And you find that it's really, really hard because most of these jobs, even though they're advertised on job boards or monster.com or wherever people go to look for jobs these days, they, they exist there, but they don't really hire from there. They're not looking for resumes that get submitted. They're looking for recruiters who are going to go out and find someone. And in July of 2015, I got a call from a recruiter. And she had gotten my number somewhere, and she was interested in me for a job that she was obviously looking to fill. And she didn't tell me a whole lot, but she said it was with an exotic car manufacturer, and the job was called Project Manager Automotive Driving. That sounds interesting. It required relocation to New York or New Jersey, which was kind of peculiar because being for an exotic car manufacturer, there's only a few possible candidates. And it was either going to be with Lamborghini in Herndon, Virginia, but I knew what jobs they had and I knew they didn't have one available that would be anything like that. So being in New York or New Jersey, it could only be McLaren or Ferrari. McLaren's in Manhattan, Ferrari's just over the river in New Jersey. I knew McLaren was in no place to be hiring someone for a role like this and they weren't really doing a lot of driving school stuff in 2015. So it had to be Ferrari. Now we all talk about some amazing dream jobs in the car business, whether it's being a presenter for Top Gear or a test driver for Lamborghini or maybe even a arbiter of carbon fiber weave for Koenigsegg. And all those are absolutely dream jobs, but they're also very high pressure. The idea of being a project manager for driving instruction, which she kind of later explained was to run the driving schools for this manufacturer, to be in charge of all Ferrari's customer-facing driving schools was a dream job. It was just going out and recreationally enjoying cars with customers every single day. And interestingly, as we started talking through what the job would really entail, I was sort of uniquely qualified because generally they were going to get other driving instructors. That's what she was kind of looking for. And I've come to find out through telling car stories here that two of our other storytellers, Emil Bure and Casey Push, were both considered for the same job and contacted by the same recruiter. So she was looking for a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds, but both of them came out of the racing and instruction background. I had some experience there with Panos Racing School and Audi driving experience, but more so I had a background in sales and I knew how to take a track day that we'd organize or a mountain drive or some kind of customer event or just building relationships with customers to really translate that into car purchases. And we all knew that Ferrari wanted to explode in terms of their volume of production and sales and so having someone in more of a sales capacity there was obviously going to be interesting. 
Now at the time, I was obviously drinking the Lamborghini Kool-Aid pretty hard, and I do legitimately love the cars from the brand. The V12 cars in particular from Lamborghini are obviously my favorites, but when it came to the V8 Ferraris versus the V10 Lamborghinis, to me it was a little bit closer, and generally I would lean a little bit more towards the Ferraris. When I had the rental car company, when it was 360s versus Gallardas, I really did prefer the 360s. You know, they have their own merits, each one, but to me, just the passion behind the brand, the raw feel, the handling, everything, I just, I do love Ferraris. So the prospect of working for the brand in this capacity was extremely exciting. And even though the job was based in New Jersey, it still required 60 to 80% travel going up to Canada or down in South America to be at the schools, but also other car events to kind of convince dealers and customers that this was something that was worth their time and that they were gonna get some value out of. But there's always a but to these deals. And in this case, it was the salary. It would have been about a third of what I was making selling cars at the time. And I was already ready to not be making that much money selling cars. So that was not that big of a deal. But given the relocation requirement, I was going to go to somewhere where it was two or three times the cost of living for me and my young family. My son, I think, was seven or eight months old at the time. and <laughs> My wife was not going to be excited about the prospect of moving. But when you get an opportunity like this, you know, run Ferrari's driving schools, you say yes, and all of us that I knew that were being considered for the job said yes immediately. And we were like, well, we'll sort out the details later. And so I sent her a resume and continued to have the discussions over the next couple of months. And you know, she said that, and I'm sure she says this to everybody, that I was the best candidate for the job that she was considering. And so she hoped that they would hire me. I'm, I, again, I, I didn't feel special because of that. She's a recruiter. It's her job to say such things. But I was really excited about it because really the thing that I loved most about the rental car company and exotic car sales was the opportunity to let people interact with exotic cars in a way that was much easier approachable and attainable than they normally assume them to be. It's a lot easier to finance a car, buy a car, own a car, drive a car, do things with cars than most people assume when they see how cool they are. And that's one of the jobs of manufacturers is to evangelize this concept that cars are fun, cars are approachable, they're not just about putting in garages, they're about having fun with them. There's nothing more fun than going on a vacation for a few days and learning how to drive Ferraris faster in Canada or in Brazil, which is where their schools were at the time. So I, I went and talked to my wife and she was like, you know, look, I know this is not something you're going to say no to. So if that's what we're doing, that's what we're doing. And she was generally on board. But we also knew that it was going to be kind of a hardship. And over time, as I was still kind of in the running and going through the interview process and being, you know, talked to by Ferrari and the recruiters and everybody else involved, I just kind of started to think, you know, this may not be actually the best decision for me right now. And I was talking to some other people and anybody you talk to about the job says, if you don't want it, I do. And I actually ended up recommending Dave Maher, who had held the record with Alex Roy from New York to LA before we set it in 2013. And he was going to take an even more massive pay cut than I was to do it. But again, it was the dream job of his and he could not have said no to it at doing it for free. And so he threw his resume in and I kind of started to bow out. But you know, at the end of the day, we found out a few months later, they did not hire any of us automotive enthusiasts or, you know, people with that type of qualification. They ended up hiring an event planner. And I guess they wanted someone who could set up chairs and organize an event and manage uh, shipping of things more than someone who could just exude car enthusiasm. So you never know what you're going to get, what you're going to be considered for. And I don't know that I could have chased it any harder and made it mine or anything like that. But it's always fun to go down those rabbit holes mentally and think about what it would be like to have a job like that. And as you think about what job you want or what career, what industry you want, I get contacted every day by some of our viewers who want information about how to get their dream job or best career paths or educational levels or anything like that about the car industry. And my answer is generally, there is not a set path. Look at the job you really want. You're not going to get it right now, but think about what would qualify you for it. And even the jobs that might seem beneath you right now or that you don't want to do the grunt work for, go get those jobs, learn, get the experience, and build that weird resume that doesn't qualify you for anything else except that job and be persistent until you find it. You know, the NCAA used to use a tagline that 99% of us will go pro in something else. All these college student athletes probably are not going to wind up playing professional sports. And the professional athletes that you talk to all say, it's a job. And it's probably best that most car enthusiasts don't make a living in the car business because there's something different about just buying the car you want, driving the car you want, and just letting it be a passion rather than being a job where you constantly have to think about, is this how I'm going to pay my mortgage this month? But fortunately, there are a lot of amazing jobs out there. And so as you think about what you want to do and who you want to be, 
Just sculpt your resume and keep your eyes on the real prize of whatever it is. And something may always pop up that's even better than you ever dreamt. But as long as you're in the right place at the right time and you're the person that they should want for it, at some point you'll find the right gig.